Now, there are still many mysteries of the universe which continue to baffle. Where on earth does Choo Choo get his shirts, for example? And why? And what can Alan possibly find to pad out the 44th volume of his memoirs? <laughs> what is a podcast? And perhaps the greatest conundrum of them all. What is Labour policy on a second Brexit referendum? Some of the greatest scholars in the land have tried to answer this question. None has succeeded. Two committed suicide after asking Barry Gardner to explain. <laughs> Labour Deputy Leader Tom Watson is on manoeuvres, arguing Labour should put any Brexit deal to a referendum and that ref in that referendum campaign to remain. The shadow Brexit foreign sec and Foreign Secretary, well, they both agree. This week's shadow Cabinet meeting was expected to take a decisive step in that direction. But dear Jez of the Red remains unconvinced, as is the hard left cabal that is closest to him. And he managed to delay a decision again, citing the need for yet more consultation. Labour MP Wes Streeting is just one of a growing band who thinks Labour must now become the party of Remain if it's to see off the Greens and the Lib Dems. This is his take of the week. Let's face it. We've all been going around and around and around in circles on Brexit for far too long. It's time for us in the Labour Party to lead the debate with clarity and conviction. We need to find the courage to make the positive case for remaining in the European Union through a fresh referendum. As our Deputy Leader Tom Watson has pointed out, EU membership is in keeping with Labour's values. Brexit isn't just a break on those ideals, it's an existential threat to them. And in all honesty, our current position is unsustainable. Constructive ambiguity, triangulation, kicking the can down the road. This landed us our worst national election result since 1910. The loss of council seats we won just four years ago. And four in 10 Labour members not voting Labour. I represent a constituency that voted to leave the EU, so I do understand the anxiety of Labour MPs to change course, but we're losing more votes to pro-Remain parties than pro-Brexit parties. And anyway, this isn't just about votes, this is about what we stand for. Tory leadership contest has beaten a path to a hard Brexit or worse still crashing out with no deal, and soon. We should be tearing strips off them, not dithering or triangulating. Like Jeremy Corbyn, in 2016, I understood the need to respect the referendum result. But now we see the broken promises, the chaos, the way that Brexit has subsumed our politics. We owe it to our country to tell the truth and to stand up for the national interest. So now is the time for Jeremy Corbyn to finally show some leadership. We can't look both ways. As Nye Bevan said, if you stand in the middle of the road, you get run down. West Street and didn't get knocked down this time, and he's with us in the studio. Almost, there were some near misses. Yeah, I'm glad it wasn't me standing there. Can I just clarify? You want Labour to support a second referendum on any deal, yep. and for Labour to campaign for Remain in that referendum? Yes. So it surely must follow that a Labour government would abandon any attempt to negotiate a better deal than the May deal. Well, I mean, that's a hypothetical. Who knows if there would be a Labour government before Brexit's complete? Yeah. It looks very unlikely. But if there was... We'll get to the 31st of October. If there was, there would be no point in a Labour government trying to negotiate a better deal. I don't know about no point. I think, I think if you're going to have a deal put to the public, which is what I would support, then if you can get a better deal, then you could try. But let's be realistic. Well, hold on, hold on. You can hardly expect Brussels to negotiate another deal when whatever you're going to get... You're then going to campaign against? Well, the, 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 to be honest, Andrew, the fallacy about negotiating a Labour deal has always been that it's very unlikely that Brussels would give a better deal than we've already had. And also, there is no commission to negotiate with. There's no negotiating team to negotiate. No. So let's be realistic about well, where I we are now. I am being realistic. If, if uh, Labour was to take your policy, it surely is logical that you have to abandon any further negotiation. Oh, I mean, Brussels wouldn't... What, Brussels would say, well, why should well, we bother? But, but, because you would have the policy of a Labour government that you would recommend in a referendum to vote against your own deal. 
But I don't, I don't accept the premise of your question because the, the, the fallacy of the Tory leadership election at the moment is the idea that uh, Boris Johnson, now Jeremy Hunt, is are going to come in and negotiate a new deal. There is no commission to negotiate with. But, there but, is no negotiating yeah, team to on, negotiate your, with. And we've got the 31st October policy. deadline. Yeah, but that's the Tories. It's your party's policy no, but it as it stands a Labour at the moment that if it gets into power in the near future, it will attempt to negotiate a better deal the Mrs May's deal. Yeah, well, that's, I, well, I'm that's your party's well, policy. Well, yeah, and, I, well, look, and I it think would it, have I, to abandon that if it decides it's going to campaign to remain against any deal, even its own. I think it's pretty clear that I don't agree with Labour policy. That's why yeah, I went walking round and round the circle. The, the, the point is, Andrew, that we've got a very limited amount of time. We've got a 31st of October deadline. I don't think that any Prime Minister, whether Boris Johnson, yeah. uh, Jeremy Hunt or Jeremy Corbyn, are going to have the time or the ability to negotiate any other deal. So, look, the, the choice now is, do we put the deal that's been negotiated and agreed to the public? Do we put no deal to the public with the option to remain? Those are the real choices. And what I want to see the Labour Party do right. is move up beyond the prevarication and the no. um, obfuscation to, I understand uh, to actually you said lead, that, lead but the I'm, argument. But I'm trying to get that the logic of that is surely that you don't even bother to renegotiate a better deal. Well, so I don't, you, well, I don't think Because you're you going can. to campaign but against... Uh, um, anything but Remain. You're going to campaign for Remain referendum. Alan, what do you make of it? Well, I, I just want to ask, Wes, what is wrong with the deal that's on the table at the moment? Well, it's, it's demonstrably worse than the deal we already have with the European Union oh, in terms right, okay. of oh, trade oh, and future relations. Oh, I understand that's that. My you problem. just want to that's remain. My, that's my problem with you it. You just want to remain. Now, David Lammy made this argument straight after the referendum, and if we were going to do it, that's the time we should have done it. The Lib Dems have now occupied that ground. For us to move onto that ground... Uh, you know, the first thing to remember is by 31st of October, we leave the EU. It happens by default if they don't extend that deadline. So there's no time to mess around with what's going to be our policy at the next election. The only way a referendum would work, and we're in this problem because we had a referendum, I don't see the solution being having another one, but the only way it would work is if you put, you agreed the deal that's on the table now, Parliament agreed it, put it to a yes-no referendum, if that's the idea, well, the people should have a final say on this. If it's accepted, fine, that's the deal. If it's rejected, you then need to have a second referendum, surely, don't you, to say, do we leave with no deal or do we remain? The idea of having the deal and remain is a gerrymandered uh, referendum. Wes? Well, it's an interesting uh, point about having a second referendum. You could have two questions. You could have question one, leave and remain, question two, Deal, deal or no deal. But the, the, in terms of, uh, the, you know, where we've got to, the, the fact is, you know, 2016, as I said, I, I thought that the right thing to do was to ena enable the government to negotiate, to try and enact the will of the referendum. But in the three years that have passed since, every single one of the main promises that were made during the referendum have evaporated. We've seen absolute chaos. The idea that we are just leaving the European Union by default on the 31st of October, irrespective of the facts, the fact we've changed Prime Minister, we've changed Brexit sectors more times than I can count. You know, things have moved well, on and the country's moved I just say them. one thing, Wes, but I know Michael wants to come in. I, I'm bemused as to why a deal that's on the table that is a soft deal that puts us in a customs union, albeit for a transition period, that uh, gives rights to workers, that, uh, that maintains environmental standards. Surely Labour isn't arguing about the backstop. That's a Tory argument about Northern Ireland backstop. I can understand us not wanting a deal because now we think we just want to remain, but I don't think that's going to fly. But it's okay, it's well, no, Michael, what's your take? Uh, my take is that uh, we won't leave on the 31st of October, but I think there probably will be a deal. I think the deal will be extremely like Mrs May's deal with a couple of twiddles. I think the European Union wants us out and the European Union wants us to make a deal and I don't think Boris Johnson or anybody else is going to go for no deal. It's self-evidently in the interest of the Conservative Party that there be a Brexit because otherwise the Conservative Party will be destroyed by the Brexit Party at the next election. But I would go further and I'd say it's in the interests, certainly of Jeremy Corbyn's Labour Party, that we uh, Brexit as well. I don't think Jeremy Corbyn wants to come to office uh, inheriting this problem, particularly with the savage divisions that he has within his own party. And one of the reasons why this will be beneficial to the Labour Party as well is that although uh, Wes is not putting much emphasis on this, uh, one of the reasons Labour has done very badly in the European elections it is that it has been destroyed in its, uh, in its hinterland 
by the Brexit Party, as the Conservative Party has been destroyed in its hinterland by the Brexit Party. And the only way to stop that happening is to Brexit. Well, let because me, once we've right. Brexited, there's no more Brexit well, Party. Let me pick up that the point that uh, Michael's made there and get you to react to it. Because this was really the point of the official briefing paper uh, from the Labour Party that was put before the Shadow Cabinet, which said that if they went down your road, there's a, quote, an evident risk that Labour would lose more seats in the Midlands and the North. And that's where the paper said Labour has the most target seats it hopes to win. It's also where its most vulnerable seats are as well. So it's saying this official briefing uses a recipe for Labour losing. And we could lose those seats if we are losing, as we are already, voters to the Lib Dems and the Greens by a ratio of three to one versus pro-Brexit parties. That's where the vote is, is fracturing to. And but they I, say I, there's more risk in the Midlands than the North. That's the official Labour briefing. I, I, I would just say what's borne out by the facts and consistent polling and doorstep conversations that we are more vulnerable to pro-Remain parties than pro-Leave. And, and don't forget, this is also about the substance. And going back to sort of Alan and Michael's challenge about where we might be, there is nothing pro-Labour about sacrificing jobs in aerospace or, uh, or the car industry or any other industries sure. in those heartlands. And we've got a responsibility as right. the opposition to set out but a clear alternative. That's if we crash out without a deal. And to make a case with... That's no, not, we no, crash it's not just deal. about... Way to stop that is to agree the deal. The, the fact is that Theresa May's deal was a leap in the dark. We have no idea what the future relationship would be. Any, any new barriers in terms of tra uh, tariffs and, and, and barriers to trade results in, in loss of jobs, loss of, of just-in-time manufacturing, which you know Britain relies on in terms of um, some of our key industries in those places that voters but leave. Can We've got the, responsibility can the, to speak up about that. You may be right or wrong on the substance. I'm looking at the politics here, because that does concern your party. Can the Labour Party continue to be the Labour Party if it's no longer the party of the working class? 26 Labour MPs have written that what you're proposing is, quote, toxic to our bedrock Labour voters. You lose them. Well, listen, I would just say, in terms of the voters that we are losing already, I mean, four in ten Labour Party members, the, the votes we've already hemorrhaged to the Lib Dems and the Greens, I honestly think that for Jeremy Corbyn, this could be just as bad for him as the Iraq war was for Tony Blair in terms of the so long-tail legacy of a perceived betrayal of enabling or facilitating or being bystanders to Brexit. That's the challenge for Labour. And let okay. me say to those colleagues, and I really do understand where they're coming from, mm. there is nothing pro-working class about sacrificing those people's jobs. Mm. And we've got to be brave about this. I would rather lose my job being honest and standing up for the national interest than vote to have people lose their jobs. But this has become a fundamental split in the Labour Party now, and it's not even left-right or Corbyn East says none. It is, is between metropolitan MPs who fear the Greens and the Liberal Democrats are more, and non-metropolitan, like these 26, who fear the Brexit party more. They see that as a bigger threat. It's quite hard to reconcile that split. Well, it is. I mean, undoubtedly, Wes, as he said in his piece, he comes from a, uh, a Remain supporting area. If you come from... No, a, I'm no, a leave area. Oh, are you from a leave area? Oh, right, OK, well, oh, good for you. Uh, but I think lots of MPs are feeling that if they're in a leave supporting uh, seat, Stoke-on-Trent, for instance. Although Labour supporters voted to remain in every seat in the country, as John Curtis has pointed out. Um, but, I, you know, in a sense, I, I can do this, so can Michael, Wes can't. I'm not so much interested in party politics on this. I'm interested in the national interest. We are in a serious crisis, the biggest peacetime crisis we've ever had. The electorate have decided they wanted to leave. They voted that way in a referendum. I'm with Wes. I don't want to leave. I want to stay. But that's the way they voted. There's a deal on the table that gets us to the next stage, which is getting our trade arrangements. We can have an orderly... I mean, the problem is, if we go down Wes's route and if we get this wrong, we crash out without a deal. And all the things that Wes quite rightly said about manufacturing jobs will happen. We'll have no control over it. All right. We, we've run out of time. Just one quick final question to you, Wes Treaty. Uh, the indications I get is that the Labour Party is moving you away. It hasn't yet. Do you think it will adopt your policy of definitely a referendum and we campaign to remain? I hope so, but we've had so many false dawns and honestly, it's the lack of clarity that is absolutely killing us. And one thing that all of us agree on broadly in the Parliamentary Labour Party, including MPs who signed that letter to Jeremy Corbyn, is that being neither one thing nor the other is losing us votes in every way. All right, well, we're there's been no lack of clarity from you tonight. Thank you. Thank you.